that see this the personality again i've been trying to tell you one of the cool kids the new cool kid in the space i Kelly like it he's up um, i'm gonna put that on my name tag from now on <laughs> We'll, we'll, I'll have it as your official title at the Hunter Conference. Hunter, perfect. perfect. Instead of HLA Foundation, I just need new cool kid. I, I, I know people. I can make some things happen. So. Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Blue, Anna Blue, president of the AHLA Foundation. That's right. Which, just to dumb it down for everyone, that's the um, charity arm of the AHLA, not the lobbying arm, but the charity arm that does good stuff for good people, right? Yeah, exactly. They're the business, AHLA, we're the people. We're the people. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about uh, 90 of a thousand stars. Did you guys do it? Alice, massive fundraiser. I'm going to hear about all those stats and data and all the great things that the foundation is doing. Um, but first, of course, I got to find out who Anna Blue is. So I need to know who who are you? How'd you? Where'd you grow up? How'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? And what is your path and journey into this joyous? Yeah, how did I get here? Yeah, how, how much here? time did we allot for this? Here you go. People are hanging <laughs> on every word. Um, so I always like to just start anytime somebody says, "Who are you and where did you come from?" I was born on a hippie commune in Canada, and no. I feel like that is just like the first exclamation point. <laughs> my wild and crazy journey. Um, I have a, a blended family, very strong women in my family, um, and grew up all over the United States, not military, not witness protection. Um, again, my mom was a little bit of a free spirit and we moved literally West coast, middle of the country, East coast. Um, and then I came to DC for, for college and I stayed. I was like, all right, now I'm putting down roots. Now <laughs> it's my decision. I'm I'm putting down roots. So how has that affected your thinking today? I mean, I think it's the building community. Like that's so much of what I've done is like build these movements and build community. And that was my my mom's perspective. So no matter where we lived, it wasn't about a job. It wasn't about a relationship. Everywhere that we moved was where there was a community that was whether it was a commune or not is is different, but it's very much just about building a community. And when you're in social justice and, and activism and politics and campaigns and the spaces that I've been in, that's really what it's about. It's about galvanizing people and building community and, and reaching across and, and collaborating. And so I think I have that, that has always been very much the bedrock of, of everything I do, including now with the industry. Yeah. I, again, I, I said, I heard you were one of the cool kids and the new cool kids in our space. <laughs> and I'm starting to see why I'm starting to get this. Wait, so where do we, we go to, uh, where do we do high school? Where do we do college? Does schooling, a thing or do we just go straight to work? By the time I graduated from high school, I'd been in nine schools. Um, yeah. So I did high school in two different parts of New York, um, yeah. like upstate New York, the Catskills, very, very tiny, tiny town and tiny school. I think we had two stoplights. Um, I did my first couple of years in high school there, and then I went to boarding school um, all girl school in upstate New York. The campus looked like a castle. It was like a very, very big shift from like Forest County in in New York State to like I'm a princess. Um, so it was, it was good. But that experience at my at the boarding school at Emma Willard was like the catalyst for that I didn't realize for a lot of the gender equity work that I've done. When I first sure. was interviewing the person, you know, I said, well, you know, what's interesting about the school. I was very wary of this whole all girls thing. I was not, that didn't seem like it would inspire me in any way. And so then, and she said, you know, what you'll find here is that young women can both be fiercely competitive and fiercely supportive at the same time. And that was something I had honestly never experienced, not in my relationships with family members, with friends, with anybody. And so that that dichotomy, like th the fact that that could exist is, was very cool to me and, and is sort of the impetus for what I then later on built my career around. Good for, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. All right. So keep going. Then un And then uh, undergrad or straight to the workforce? I went to GW. So that's how I got to DC. I went to good old George Washington University and um, <laughs> I thought I was, you know, like a lot of young people do when they move to the district. And I'd be curious if it's still true today, given our political environment. But 
um, you know, I was coming to DC to change the world and I was going to run for Congress and you know, all these things that you just think that you're capable of doing um, as a young person. And and I did end up going into politics. So I spent the first um, eight years of my career in politics and I did all the things that you do. I worked for a trade association. I worked for a nonprofit on the advocacy side. I worked um, for a corporate lobbying, like government affairs office and was very fortunate to just have some really wonderful mentors along the way. I did my time on Capitol Hill. I worked for a Senator, uh, for a few years. And then I ended up actually working on the 2008, uh, pl- presidential campaign, which was amazing. And then decided to leave politics after that. Wait, is that because you got lost and you got kicked out? That's all I know about Washington. Uh, who'd you, I got to ask, who'd you, who are the people that you worked for and worked with? What senators, what presidential campaigns, et cetera? Yeah, I worked, uh, for Senator Ben Nelson, who was from Nebraska. Okay. Um, that very first job that I had coming out of college was in mutual of Omaha's government affairs office. And that was also when the Senator was elected to the Senate. And so I still knew people from that office and I kind of bounced around and did other things. And then they circled back and said, Hey, there's this position with the chief of staff open. Do you want to come and work in the senator's office? And um, and it was great. He and I did not align all the way across the board political in terms of ideology, but he was very much there to represent the people who elected him. And that's what everybody loses sight of, I think, today is like why you're actually there. It's not about your fundamental beliefs, but the people who elected you. And, you know, it's like he was it was also cool to see the the moderate, right? Like Ben Nelson was technically a Democrat, but he was like purple at best. Um, but that willingness to reach across the aisle, he was always one of the people if a bill needed to move forward and we needed those moderates to come together, like he was one of those. And to see that level of compromise and willingness to to build those relationships and reach across the aisle and put political party and your flag aside was was cool to witness because I don't know that that exists anymore. How much do you think was Ben and how much do you think was just the era that time? I think it's both. I do think that, you know, there were still, there've always been extremists, not in the way that we see them today, but there have always been the the farther right and the farther left, although those needles have moved significantly right. today. Yeah. But we've always had that, you know, people who didn't want to compromise, like this is this is what I believe I'm sticking to it. And I think it takes those folks in the middle who are willing to listen to both sides and see both sides and and to actually just move things forward for the sake of getting things done. Sometimes you just need to get things done. And that's why we elect them and pay them is to get things done on our behalf. Just a public service announcement, just a reminder of why they're there. <laughs> uh, it sounds like the job of a broker, by the way. That, right. I was doing right. that earlier today. Like, it's okay. Let me explain why this is going to be okay. To both uh, sides. Right, exactly. To, to both sides. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but you learned a bunch though. I mean, it seems, it seems yeah, you've yeah. you gotten good mentors and people that you can learn from, whether you're totally aligned politically or not, you're aligned mm-hmm. sort of, let's use what we need to do in life, life skills. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I worked on Obama's 08 campaign and, you know, I did youth organizing up and down the Eastern seaboard and no matter where anybody's political flag is planted, that was a groundbreaking campaign. Like yeah. we just hadn't seen a campaign being run right. that way. You know, I remember somebody telling me that they've never given to a political candidate before. And his exact words were, I have $25 to this man to death. <laughs> like every chance <laughs> they got, they just clicked 25, 25. And, and it did. It inspired. I mean, if you're going to run a presidential campaign on hope and change. Like these are two very abstract concepts that want, that worked. And um, so it was just it was cool to be a part of that and to see the excitement that people had. I mean, I had doors slammed in my face. I had, you know, people yell at me and then that, but I also saw the really beautiful side of humanity too. And it taught me that I didn't want to stay in politics, that as wonderful as it was, it was the first time in my career I was connecting with real people who were telling me real things about their experiences, about why they vote about why they care about the issues that they care about. And I realized that DC lives in this ivory tower of politics where you're disconnected from real humans. And I didn't want to be a part of that anymore. Whatever I was going to do, it was going to involve people. So after that, then what do we do? 
She'll try to get to how you ended up in the hotel space. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, we can kind of fast forward a little bit because then I, I went into social impact. So that's what I've been doing since then. Yeah. I worked in urban education. Um, then I went to the United Nations Foundation to gender equity there for a number of years, kind of galvanizing young people, kind of going back to my Obama root days of, of youth and young people and getting them excited to become advocates in their community for gender equity, regardless of where in the world they live. We operated in 118 countries and um, and it was amazing. I'm still on the board. I loved it that, that time. And we really sort of transformed the organization. And in my time in nonprofits, I've worked in digital safety with all the big tech companies. But what you learn if you're in social impact and like trying to get things to change for the better for humanity is you have to go where influence, where decision makers are, where there's money and where there's power. And so when this opportunity came to me, it was it was really all of that. Like it's an entire industry. It's an industry that has influence, that has a huge mark on the economy, that has a massive you know, workforce that is global, where there, there are resources, there are decision makers. And so to be sitting at AHLA and the HLA Foundation, where all of that comes together. And, you know, then it's like, okay, we we collectively can do something, right? Like as an industry, we can move things forward. We can make things better for people. And that's a dream. I love it. Yeah. All right. So good. So put it, what in your words, what's your mission today? Well, AHLA Foundation, okay. But what is Anna's mission today? To make this industry better for people, right? Like for the people who work in it, for the people who walk into our hotels to, because if you make it better for the people who work in it, then you're going to automatically make it better for your guests, right? So um, it really is when I said HLA focuses on the business, we need that. We need people who are lobbying and advocating on behalf of industry. We need the bottom line to, to continue to thrive, but we also need a strong workforce. We need an equitable workforce. We need um paths to leadership for for young people to get them inspired and willing to come into our industry. We need to invest in untapped talent and and all of these things. And and so that's really what I'm here to do. I'm here to say, hey, remember your people. And they do. Like this is an industry that does want to take care of its workforce. But like here, let us help you do that. Right. Like let us be the ones who can innovate as a foundation to help you better take care of your workforce. Well, give me some suggestions. Sorry, before I go, you need a leadership. Every, everywhere you need a leader, so I'm going to get back. I'm going to dive into your leadership skills. But every, mm -hmm. every organization, every mission, everything needs a person that says, this is what yeah. we're doing, and we're going this direction. Follow yeah. me, some brilliant ideas. Here's some stuff that you guys can do. I'm going to make it very easy. And then you tr it trickles down, right? And everybody else grabs their, in their yeah. neighborhood and or their organization, their company, and they take it and go, right? Yes. All right. So and that is exactly why I said this is a dream is because, you know, when you look at the people on AHLA's board, the executive committee, the people on my board of trustees, like th those are those people. They are the decision makers in their company. They are at the very top. They are setting the corporate culture. They are setting who they are and how they show up in the world. And those are the people that I need to be able to work with. You know, I can go in and talk to a front desk agent about what needs to change, but but he or she has no power to do that, right? So I need the people, you know, at the top to align. And when then when you can bring that all together and decide who do we want to be as an industry, how do we as an industry want to take care of our people, it's even more powerful. Yeah, and it's a very engaged um, organization. I mean, yes, we need the lobbying arm to make sure that the laws are in our favor and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but the foundation side is is very important and. To your point, I mean, I don't know, maybe we talk about the night of a thousand stars now, right? You just threw it at Alice. Okay. But who was, one, I want to know the stats, like how much money you raised, et cetera. But mm -hmm. more importantly, your point, who all show, everyone shows up. All the shows up. of all the major companies in our space, in our industry show up, mm -hmm. not just yeah. write a check. Oh, yes, they all write checks, but they all show up that night. I guess it's that important and or kudos to what you're doing. Yeah. No, they do. The industry shows up. And I think that, and I keep saying the words to them, like collective impact, collective impact. Like it's, it is the power of what's in that room. We had 500 of the big dogs, right? That's what I always call them. The big dogs in industry in one room. <laughs> um, and that is like that, that's an incredible amount of power to set pace, to set change, to set culture, to, to decide again, who our industry is. And so 
um, to be in that room and, and to feel that, to have people come up to me afterwards and say, what else can I do? Like, yes, I can write a check, but what else can I do? People are now coming to the foundation saying, I, I want to be on your board. I want to be a part of this. And that's really exciting because it shows that it's not just a check. Lots of people can write a check. Lots of people can give a donation. You tick the box, but that's not what I'm getting from the industry. I'm getting people who, who are inspired by this and want to get engaged. And it's awesome. I love it. All right. So how much money did we raise this year? We raised about a million dollars this year. Yeah. Um, just short of what we raised last year. Last year was uh, like 1.2 million, but it was also our fifth anniversary and people like to to bolster their gift on an anniversary. Although I think you should do it every year. Just, you know, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, but yeah, so we had a great show, but we did have the highest on-site giving than we've ever had. So people who in the room were moved by the folks that we honored, you know, we get to give away the the stars of the industry awards. And so people that were honored and inspired um, just by what they saw gave at a higher level, which is a great indicator of the direction that we're going. Yeah. I, again, I think everybody's sort of on board with what we're trying to accomplish. Right. And I, I, help me, I, I've been there, but there's awards, there's GM awards, there's sort of scholarships and trips and things like that. And there's always people that we honor. So, and those are all good moving, touching moments. Yeah, they are. They remind you like who the heart of the industry actually is. And it's not those 500 people in the room. It's the folks that we're honoring. It's the folks in, in housekeeping. It's the folks in HR. It's the folks who are doing the work that continue the, to move this industry forward every day. And so it's a great way to rem, to remind everybody of that. I love it. All right. So um, I want to get back to your leadership style and skills and things that you're doing um, okay. and and who were like the biggest influences in your life and what you think, um, you know, just sort of who's had the impact on you and how that's resonated and what you're giving back to kind of the next generation in your leadership style. So. I don't know. I mean, there are so many different, I like, I would like to believe I am, I am, or I am in progress. We're always in progress, right? You know, I think transformational leadership is what I aspire to be somebody that is authentic and empathetic and people, you know, someone who people can trust and identify with. And I think to do this work, you have to be one of those people. You have to be somebody, you know, empathy, we're a nonprofit, we're all about humans um, and humanity. And so I think that's, that is fundamentally there, but even that with my team and making sure that, that the industry feels that, and that the folks who are investing in the foundation feel that, and that they feel um, like their money is in good hands, which it, it needs to be right. You're asking people to give and give at a high level and you can give to a lot of things. So that's who I, who I strive to be for sure. I mean, I'm super funny. If you see me on stage at night of a thousand stars, I'm very funny. <laughs> <But> <laughs> just because it's a lot of talking and you don't want people to fall asleep on their steak. So, um, but generally speaking, you know, I think for me, I've had, I don't even know how to nail down relationships. Relationships are everything to me. You know, I've said before, relationships are my superpower. Like if I can connect with somebody and, and that, and that like moment happens, right. There's always that vibe where you're like, yep, now you're stuck with me. We are going to continue to be friends and colleagues and whatever it is. And, um, and to have those, I have an incredible group of friends that that are interesting because I, I call them a group of friends because they're mine, but none of them are actually friends with each other. They're these <laughs> different, distinct relationships that all represent different parts of my life and and the people who who at any given time have shown up for me and or filled in the gaps or helped me become who I am. Um, and that is really, you know, that's that's my family. Like I sort of consider them like the beats of my heart. Um, but then that continues to grow as, as I change industries and as I have moved and um, gotten to know people. So I don't know that there is, you know, as I said, I grew up in a family of very strong women. My mom was a single parent. My grandmother was, you know, the first female Broadway producer to win, um, a, a Tony for producing, you know, at a time when women weren't allowed to do that. And, you know, so I have these trailblazers in my life. Um, my mom, who had a, literally a different successful career in every state that we lived in, that were not related to each other, right? Like she went from 
being a, a certified alcohol and drug counselor and mediator in Colorado to running a transportation company in New York, <laughs> like not even remotely connected, but she can do anything. Like she is just this woman who like, if she doesn't know how she's going to figure it out and she can do anything. So I have um, been very just fortunate to have that type of, of net around me at all times and, and to grow up in that regardless of whether things were easy or hard or where we lived or who we were around um, to have that is like, okay, how do I carry this forward? And I feel like I've been able to do that. Okay, let's uh, wrapping this up. Let's talk about uh, the conference Castile Project forward. You guys merged, correct? Yeah, we're, we're yes. talking at the conference. We're doing a panel. Be very powerful. Give me thirty seconds on that. Yeah, absolutely. The um, so we had Castell, HLA had Forward. I brought it all together. It's now right. one initiative under Forward. Um, at the conference, we will be talking about sort of trailblazers in finance who happen to be women. Um, but we'll be sort of digging into what we can do, what we can further do to diversify women in finance uh, or just financial roles in general in our industry. So it's going to be fun, especially because right now it's a tricky time to talk about diversity. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to talk about that, but we are going to keep, keep talking about it. So it'll be great. We're going to have um, some good folks join us and I hope everybody at Hunter will stick around. We're proud this year, and I, I guess it was intentional, but it also felt kind of organic. I don't know. Maybe I could have it both ways. But we have 58% diversity this year at the conference. So speakers on the panels, uh, et cetera, 58%. That's a huge number. So we're really That's excited incredible. about that. Congratulations. That's amazing. You are far ahead of others. Well done. We um I, we have a great team that uh, this, this stuff matters, but they work with great people like yourselves. Peggy Berg's at the top of the list. Uh, Rachel Humphreys top of the list. Um, and then all the brands, to your point, maybe all your work trickling down have all leaned in. Yeah, I think the industry is, there has been a shift from what I understand. Again, I'm only 13 months in, but really over the past few years of recognizing that there is so much talent, right? The talent is not all just at the top. There is so much talent in this industry, so many interesting perspectives and experiences brought to the table. And I think once you recognize that, then your pool gets so much bigger. And then it's like, oh, we have 20 people we want to put on stage at your conference. And you're like, hi, I just asked for one. But, you know, but that's the better problem to have as opposed to like, ah, you want to, ooh, ah, but we have this guy and just this guy and that's it. Right. But it's not it. And so it's great to know that that's the direction and that people are like, yeah, what do you need? We've got this, this, and this. And I think that's that's awesome. And congratulations. That's great to hear. Thank you. And and I think it's real. I think I think they're yeah. I think it's evolving with internally within the firms, right? So and what at first it was no, no, here's our person, our male who that's the person, like this, he's the, the president person, or whatever. Right, exactly. Here you go. And then they felt like they had a role of a person that would speak. And now it's just everyone and here's all the people yeah. heads of all the different uh committees and organizations and they have lots to pick from and yes they they send a bunch our direction yeah and that, okay. I mean, what's great is the moment you realize that the ceo is not always the most interesting person <laughs> and no offense to any ceo out there but there it's it's just true like there's a lot of different stories in our industry to tell some of the most amazing stories i've heard in my career have been in the last year and so it's great that folks are recognizing that and wanting to tell those stories. And I hope there's some empowerment too of people to, willing to tell their stories. We want to hear yeah. that's why we're doing this. We yeah. want to hear people's story. We want to hear your story. We yeah. want to hear a story yeah. we haven't heard before, right? I'm one because, right. yours, but okay, yours happens to be pretty unique. So <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> a little, little bit. bit. Um, I am an anomaly in this industry. Everybody I talk to is like, oh, I've worked in this industry for 35 years. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Right. I've been here 13 months. And then uh, uh, you're going to get there. It's a great industry. I love it. Everybody in it loves it. There's a reason. I love it. Are fantastic. I, I agree. Uh, the people are really good. They're genuine. They care about everyone from top to bottom. Uh, we have a bad eggs, but everybody, we're, we're fine. Everybody we're just has those, yeah. So yeah. welcome, 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 welcome. I'm thrilled. Uh, Thank you. It's 13 months, so it's not really welcome, but you know what I mean? Thank you for doing this. Uh, I will see you at the conference. And uh, let us know how we can help with everything that you do on the foundation. We greatly appreciate you lead, taking that charge and leading the industry. Well, thank you, Teague. It was really great. I enjoyed this. This is a fun conversation for a Friday. <laughs>